Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 37 of Red Dirt and Stardust, a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition Western and pirate science fantasy campaign. So where we last left the party off, Lila and Chauncey went to the general store and recovered a package that was sent to them, finding many interesting items inside, including hearth berries, magical seeds, boots, shields, and other such things, and also a free night stay at a particular tavern in the Feywild called the Bray and Bunny. After divvying out some of the items and figuring that Jed might take some when he returns from dealing with Birdie, they went back into town, but not before having a short confrontation with Delmas, where it seems Chauncey plucked up quite a bit of courage and told him to leave him alone, since he had dealt very deftly with Corrigan, showing him the ashes as well. On the way into town, they met Zelina, the succubus that they had found in the Shadowfell that had set up shop right next to Goldie, the woman from Twin, Gore, Twin Gulch, who had set up a newspaper for the town of Drake's Ridge. They made their way back to the bar and had a little bit of a back and forth with Adrian, trying to get more information out of him, but were unable to, and decided to go over his head, going to Mayor Yvonne, collecting the reward for Corrigan's dead body, or at least the promise of said reward, and asked her for information. She cast the legend lore spell and informed them that the book Adrian was looking for, or at least the page Adrian is looking for, came from a book called the Liber Logayet, an incredibly powerful encyclopedia that had the power to conjure all kinds of things and had the true names of many beings. A book so powerful and frightening, the gods tore it apart and cursed the pages to never be bound back together. It was at this point that Adrian's raven, Chrysanthus, had landed on the windowsill, catching the last part of that conversation. Lila and others noticed it and quickly put it to sleep. However, we are going to start back in the general store, Jed having walked ahead firmly to try and get to Birdie, knowing that she had quite the time, you enter the general store a few moments before. You still hear Chauncey and Dez and Lila having a conversation as they're coming through the door as you just go upstairs. And you were told she was resting in Gertie's room. You've been in Gertie's room, of course. You've yeah. read through her bisexual erotica <laughs> um, that bisexual she wrote horse herself. Erotica. <laughs> well, the one you read was a dragon rider erotica, oh, so yeah. Well. That's worse. Oh, yeah, that's worse. Yeah. yeah, it is. Very true. So you uh, make your way up to Gertie's room, and I'm presuming you knock on the door in the guise of Virgil. Yes, I, I, I brush it up. I, I, I think I I magic my, my illusion of Virgil to be just like a little bit fancier than normal, a little bit more put together, um, just because... No, I'm glad. You know, I, I know the the role play just happened to work out this way because I had to miss the first episode. But I, Jed doesn't want the rest of the party here. Jed wants to keep everything Birdie sees and knows under under what he wants her to see and know. Mm -hmm. And um, so he'll gussy himself up and then knock on the door. <laughs> There's a moment you hear shuffling before opening the door. A crack so that her face can poke out is Birdie. There are bags under her eyes. She she doesn't look necessarily sick. She looks incredibly tired, just exhausted. Birdie. Hi, Virgil. You look as pale as a ghost, Birdie. What what on earth is happening? Uh, what on Ponderosa is happening? <laughs> she just opens the door, and you see she is wrapped in a quilt. She's wrapped herself in a quilt. Um, and I was getting she... some messages from Caleb. Something about feathers. Oh, yeah. And she sits down on the bed, and she takes off the the uh, quilt, and kind of turns around. Um, it is. Not quite a horror show, but it is 
something to behold. The there is a very large, two very large mounds on her back that look like something is growing underneath of her skin. It is an angry red. So you have two of those. And then poking out are um sheathed feathers. When birds grow their feathers, they grow them first with a sheath, and then the sheath comes off. There's tons of those poking out, as well as fully formed white feathers. It's not a complete wing. It looks like this. Com it looks like it's just the feathers growing out of the mounds on the back. Like the wings haven't come out from under the skin yet. They're still forming under the skin and will eventually <laughs> poke their way out. It looks incredibly painful. <laughs> like in internally, um, Jed's like, <coughs> but externally, he's like, "Oh, birdie, heavens, poor thing." Do I? Do I think she's human? Does the whole does the whole town think she's human? Or I I think we kind of went back and forth on this a little bit on who okay. knows what she is. I'm not sure if you know. Um, but there is definitely a sort of like miracle baby element to her. Yeah. Where they were trying for baby, trying for baby, trying for baby, trying for baby. They just could not. And then finally her mother got pregnant and i believe we had her mother die in childbirth or somewhere close to that didn't we i think i wrote the mom is like alive but she's like a shell of a person <laughs> um okay yeah so not all not trotted out in front of the congregation it, it's more of birdie that has that done because she's the miracle baby that they've been praying for and oh finally gifted yeah. them the this baby um, Birdie, do you, what happened? I don't know. I I just noticed that at some point things started snagging when I started putting dresses on, and I had Caleb check it out, and that's when he, he said that they were feathers. I, I couldn't quite see in the mirror when I was trying to to turn around, but. I just started growing feathers and I just father wasn't too happy of course it, it meant that he couldn't you know I, I was different now I, I, I don't know it just felt so off I had to leave I, I couldn't I don't even have my stuff Jed is Jed's very good at. I mean, this is how he got Virgil too. This is how he got Virgil to to do what he wanted. So he he's very empathetic and sweet. And he comes and like sits down with her and is like kind of brushing her hair and, is, <laughs> and is, your own father. What father? Why why would he not? This is right. This is clearly something divine is happening to you. I don't know. He just didn't seem too happy, I guess, because I didn't really want to be paraded around with these things sticking out of my back. I, I, I've, I've had to, I've had to wear some of the clothes Chauncey had up for sale that were backless, because I, 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 I didn't even bring any of my clothes. I just came over to Dez, and right, well. Des is, we've all, Des has always been a good one, but it's smart of you to come here. Um, I'll see about getting some of your things if if you're not ready to go home yet. I I don't, I think I'll be going home for a while. Can I use some of my celestial healing light? I'm not. I'm sure she's not like missing hit points or something but like if right. it's all gross and bloody back there can i try to heal some of the the scabs and nastiness away and like yeah i'll i'll say you can use some of it to like it becomes less red um yeah. it does not shrink the growths on her back but the skin becomes less red more of less of bright blood red and more of a bad sunburn red yeah 
Yeah, I don't. Birdie, I think this might this might get a whole lot worse before it gets better. I was afraid of that. Well, oh, everyone just seems different now after all this started happening. I know. Okay, how really long, how long have I been gone? Like in total, by the way. <laughs> I think it has been almost a month. Okay. Just just trying to count where trying yeah. to count for like all the traveling that you all have done the, over the multiple days. It has been literally close to a month <laughs> that you have been gone. So you don't know when this started, especially because Virgil didn't really give a real Virgil didn't give a time frame of when he received the messages, presumably because he was being tossed around by Corrigan and being flown through the Astral Sea, not really having a time reference. Yeah. Um, which it's already just going through the Astral Sea. Already it's hard to tell how long you've been gone just because the day-night cycles haven't really, aren't really linked up properly. Um, but it has been around a month that you've been gone. Right. Oh, I'm, I'm real sorry I wasn't here to help you deal with this, Birdie. I know Caleb was probably the right pill about all of it. Yeah, he was he was sending you sending spells and was very mad that you weren't answering. It was spotty connections, Shadowfell system. It's a real rough time out there, Birdie. Not bad. But I'm here now. And uh, whatever's going on, we'll get through it. Oh, okay. I hope so. I'm, I don't want to stay in poor Gertie's room forever. Um, I tried reading one of the books, but I didn't really... I don't know. It was a, it was a bit much. <laughs> uh, Jed blushes a little bit. <laughs> um, Gertie seems like she probably has some, like I look. It's it's very like horse girl, pretty princess in here, isn't it? Like more of not so much pretty princess, but definitely okay. horse girl. Like she has little <laughs> ceramic figurines all over yeah. the place. She has books on horses all no. over the place. She probably has a, a stuffed toy horse that she had Chauncey make at some point on her bed. Um, she definitely has a horse quilt on her Perfect. bed. <laughs> Gertie seems like she has interesting taste. Yeah. Very interesting and specific tastes. Right, right. Mayo preserve her. Um, <laughs> I do a holy gesture. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I have one thing I want to ask her. Where was it? All right, so, so Birdie, I know you have a bit of a reputation among town as a miracle baby. Do you... I, I don't, I can't account for every second of your life, but if I was going to think about what was going to cause someone to sprout some wings, Miracle Baby seems like a good place to start. I guess. I I, I just thought I, you know how father was wanting a baby for so long and wasn't getting one and wasn't getting one. And then finally, when it does happen, it, it feels like a miracle, even if it just isn't, you know? Even if something's not a miracle, people will call it a miracle because they've been waiting for it for a long time. I, I always felt that was what happened. He just finally got his wish. Well, maybe he prayed so hard, oh, finally listened. Or who knows what else, but you've never asked, never inquired about the, the the circumstances of your birth? Not really. He just just kept saying I was a miracle. 
All right. Um, well, I can see about going to your house and uh, bringing some of your things back. Uh, by the way, I heard uh, the old stable hand was back in town. Uh, you know anything about him? Well, I think he came in briefly to speak with, with Gertie, and he also spoke with my father, and he mentioned that is from what I heard from around town, he had something to check on and then just left. He right. might he might be coming back. I'm not I'm not sure. I'm kind of having my own little pity party up here, so I don't know much. <laughs> yeah, I think you got your your hands full for sure. Uh well uh I'll probably head back over to the church now and see if I can Get you some of your things, maybe. Probably ought to have a war with Caleb, too, at some point. Uh, which will, I'm sure, be a lively conversation. I'm quite sure. Well, it's good to see you, Bertie. It's, uh, it's good to see you, too. And if you see Chauncey, can you, can you tell him that I'll find a way to pay for all the dresses that I had to wear? I'm sure he'll, uh, I'm sure he'll be perfectly fine with that. I just, yeah. I just don't want to impact his business. You know, he works so hard. He does. Uh, now you, uh, you be careful. Those, uh, it looks like those wings of yours might be a little sore. So I'm sure I don't need to be the one to tell you that, but. While they're growing, should keep a, a special eye on, on them and try not to rub against stuff. Somewhat of a healing man, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hope this is over sooner rather than later, but I know these things take time sometimes. I'm just afraid of what's going to happen next. Well... We can face it together. Okay. And Jed will walk out. And so I'm going to say, with perhaps pauses and some of the healing magic and all of that stuff, you actually watch as Chauncey and Lila actually make their way into Mayor Yvonne's house. Um, into her tower. You watch them kind of make their way in, and following them is a raven uh, that lands on a windowsill up uh, higher on the tower. Um, I would say you would probably recognize this was the Dampier's raven who assisted you in the fight against Clara Sanderson. Um, and the raven just perches there. Oops. <laughs> well, I guess I'm not going to go talk with Adrian, <laughs> was his name? Yes, Adrian. So, um, cool bird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you did see Lila and Chauncey head into Yvonne's magical tower. Uh, I, I suppose I'll go join them then. So as you get closer to the tower, I will say this conversation kind of happens uh, around the same time. As you get maybe within like 120 feet of the tower, you watch as the raven just falls off the windowsill <laughs> and lands on the ground, clearly asleep. <laughs> it smells like Lala's handiwork. <laughs> yep, it Seems like it would be. Um, <laughs> as you get closer, the door to the tower appears, and it actually also opens, um, as if inviting you in. Can never get one over on good old Yvonne. All right. I'm just sending a quick text to our player, Adrian. 
we briefly lost to a computer update. Oh, yeah, there he goes again. Yep. So you enter the tower and head upstairs just as you all are kind of reworking yourself and getting back to normal after having this bombshell of what Adrian is looking for dropped on your head. And Jed comes through the door of the astromancy room here what with I all missed. of the <laughs> things. Um, what if you walk in when Chauncey's asking if she can cast sending to someone she doesn't know or help him cast sending? Yeah, I think, I think that would be a good point for Jed to walk in. Yeah, Chauncey's just like, um, you know what, I'm not, I'm not a wizard. I, I do certain kinds of magic, but I can't. If we can cast sending to someone, I mean, we might be able. Oh, hi, Jed. Or not Jed. Hi, Jed. <laughs> <laughs> Above game, you didn't say Jed. Yeah. I, Jed I murders figured... you instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Instant fireball. No one can know. No witnesses. <laughs> um, am I interrupting something? Uh, not really. Um, this might be information you need to know, given you are part of this group. Um, it seems your new friend, Adrian, has um, been tracking down a page of an incredibly powerful book, the Liber Logaya. It is a book that is powerful, an encyclopedia of everything in the world. Um... I see we're on a different account. Helen. Hi, Helen. <laughs> Hello, Helen. The new character <laughs> is the... Oh. Oh. oh Sorry. No. One okay. second. All right. It is an encyclopedia of all things, and it is rumored to have the true names of things such as angels, arch devils, Elementals, archfey, beings of all kinds, can summon them, conjure them, but also has information on things like wolves and bats and mushrooms. It is the ultimate compendium of all things. It's incredibly powerful, so powerful that the gods tore it apart and cursed its pages to never be reunited. If he has one of these pages, it could be something as simple as mushrooms or wolves or something as complicated as the true name of Asmodeus himself. I know many powerful beings know their names in the Liber Logaith and are seeking to destroy the page they are written on. But that is a harder feat than one might imagine. Great. So he already has some of these pages or he's looking for some of these pages? From what it sounds like, he is looking for... A page. A page was in his family's oh. possession. And well, it well, was lost. It was stolen. Stolen by the Night Riders, apparently. And <laughs> yeah. I yeah. might be the only one with a connection to them in town. Well. Are we getting sent out already? We just got back. <laughs> we but literally have not even logged down. I, I am I, I am a holy man. I do need to go to the church at some point. <laughs> that is true. It in this case it might be safer to stay put for a while. Perhaps send out some messages, get some more information from other sources. Find more knowledgeable people, wizards, doctors, witches, things that may know more about this thing. Speak with them. Stay put. Rest. We do not know where this page is or whose hands it is in. I could try to invite my brother to town and see what he knows. Why don't we just say let's rest for the evening and address that situation in the morning and Madame Yvonne, I do suppose you'll let us know when that reward comes in. Yes, of course. I will send a sending spell for you. 
Um, and yes, to answer your question, Chauncey, I can send a sending spell. However, I must know what they look like and must know a bit about them or else I am firing this spell into the void. I can I can spend a little time tonight getting a uh, I'll I'll have something for you for tomorrow or the day after for sh I can do that. All right. Um, well, I wish you a good rest, and hopefully you find all of the contacts that you need in order to, to find this page. It seems it could be incredibly dangerous. Excellent. Well, I would wager this page probably ain't in good old Drake's Ridge. So... It is possible, but it is also possible it is elsewhere. Should probably find out why our new friend is here then. That is something you will need to ask him for himself. I have not seen many visions or gotten any senses about him recently. Only the Two new places that have set up shop, and of course, the Brigonox moving into the mines. Those have been more pressing visions and things of that nature. Right. Well, good to see you as ever, Mayor Yvonne. Of course. Good luck with your travels. Wherever they may take you. I'm assuming Hopefully at this point you all nowhere leave. for long. <laughs> so, yeah. Um. So I am assuming you all leave the tower at this point. Um. I am not sure if Adrian is yeah. ready to join us quite yet. Um. I nice... just, for some oh. reason. Um, like, even when I try to use a virtual background, it doesn't come through. Um, do you have video access for me? I cannot do anything. Uh, I can only mute you, ask you to unmute, turn off your camera, turn on your camera, or boot you from the meeting, in which case you cannot return on that account. Right. So, um, can you try turning off and on my camera on your end? Yeah, I'll do that real quick. Doing things on the fly. Sorry, I just, I don't know. All right, well, I can't turn on your camera, but I can ask you to turn on your camera. <laughs> Host this doctor video, blah, blah, blah. Still nothing. I hate my computer. Maybe um, you. So, use video. Um, <sighs> it's all right. We will forge forward. We've had technical difficulties before. We will have technical difficulties in the future. This is just one of the bugbears we will have to deal with. All good. So, is Adrian, at this point, traveling towards his unconscious companion, which I think at this point, since sleep only lasts a minute, would have woken up? Um, no, I Adrian... think... Hmm? Um, he would wait for Chrysanthus to wake up and come back to him. Um, at right. the moment, he is currently in his room with someone getting his fill. All right. That being said, the raven begins to make its way back. Uh, I'll say, Lila, with a 18 perception, you see Chrysanthus uh, fly off back towards the salty spittoon. Uh, right. Yeah. That's and you all make your way out of the tower. So what would you all like to do now that you are back out into the, I would say at this moment, probably evening air? <sighs> you know, I really just wanted a little bit of time to do some weaving. Do you know how hard it is to weave something? Do you know how intensive it is? Right, right. That's definitely the most pressing issue at hand. 
Speaking um, of, um, how exactly is Buddy doing? Sprouting feathers, you know, it's a, it's a miracle. I, yeah, <laughs> of course it is. It's pretty, it's vicious. It's truly gnarly. <laughs> yeah. That's a crime shame. <laughs> Do you have any idea what could have caused that? I've had... Sneaking suspicions about her origins since I came to this town. Uh, something her dad knows. I need to find out. I've been crying around on that family for a long time, and they are a tough nut to crack. Um, but this might be a chink in the armor for once. Hmm. So you think they might know a bit more than they say? I know they know a lot more than what they say. <laughs> the church in this town has done things that would horrify you. I'm not entirely sure about that, but I suppose that's a conversation we can have over well, actually I think I've had enough to drink for one day finally. <laughs> well shall we uh go try to confront this new player in our game sure why not as if I haven't seen enough of him today well, it sure seems like he had a interest in us enough to send his familiar after us that's for sure. I suppose the talking to is in order. He did seem to like you a lot, Lila. Is that supposed to be a joke? <laughs> He's staying at the end, right? I'm sure uh, a woman of, of the house room. such as yourself should have no issue finding out which room. <laughs> no, my dear. Teddy won't have no problem giving me that information. Not that I have any desire to get closer. Well, what are we waiting for? He's also the only person, as far as I know, who saw my illusion fall. Which... <clears throat> and is definitely suppose... a conversation that needs to be had. I don't suppose you've got a remedy more powerful than a conversation in your back pocket. At the moment, doctor's best medicine would be murder. So let's try to not get there, I think. Maybe not on the first night. Yeah. He's new in town. Maybe we can convince him to, as you and I do, Lila, respect that all people have their secrets. Indeed they do. Indeed they do. On that note, bit of a stroll. <laughs> you all stroll back into town. You pass by Zelina's shop, still with the plank, with the words painted in hand lettering, nailed to the post. And next to it, the Drake's Ridge bugler with its brand new shiny sign. The lamps are beginning to be lit inside. There are surprisingly two other people inside um, typing away on typewriters, uh, a brand new technology that has been kind of making its way slowly around Ponderosa. I'm not sure if any of you would have seen one, but you might be aware of their existence. Bursting out of the front door is a very familiar woman. It is Goldie Tell with her gold shirt, puffy sleeves, and her dress as she rushes out and kind of almost skids on her heels as she, well, mighty fine meeting y'all here. I don't have much time, but if you, when you have time, I still need that interview. Also, seems you all have um quite a few stories. Um, Would you all be interested in maybe 
occasionally, dropping by and giving me a scoop for an interesting story from the outside world. I can pay you. Mm -hmm. Um, ten gold a story. <laughs> right, right. Um, how much would you like to hear about the mating habits of deep desert beetles? Not those type of stories. You'd be surprised how often that comes up. <laughs> oh, I'm uh, slightly more terrified of desert beetles now. <laughs> anyway, if you have any interesting half-line adventures you want to share with the rest of the town, if you'd like, I can make you an honorary journalist, and all you need to do is come by and tell me these stories. I'll even sweeten the deal, just so that I can hash things out. And she pulls out a sending stone. Just that I know I have a scoop coming up. So we just use that if we think that we have a story we want to tell you? Yeah, just send me a sentence spell. I'll send you one back. We can work something out and you can give me all the details when you get back. The people want to know. At least on my end, Miss Goldie, you have a deal. All right, honorary journalist. And she hands you a sending stone. Uh, all right, fine. Well, I have places to be and people to talk to, so I will see you all later. And she rushes off somewhere. Where does she possibly have to be? What news is there in this town? Yeah. I mean, well, there was a bit of a ruckus in the town square, if I recall. <laughs> Father told me so many things about the mating habits of deep desert beetles when we I know, Chauncey, I know. <laughs> we all know, Chauncey. <laughs> Having had a 45-minute conversation about something that bored you half to death while you Only were there Only 45 clinic. minutes? We had <laughs> week-long boat trips. <laughs> like... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> True. Where you were trapped on a boat. <laughs> With nothing but beetle mating habit stories. <laughs> um, all right, well, let's uh, see to the end. What's my job in this? Look scary. He's going to, like, slightly raise one side of his lip to show off a thing. He's like... I don't think it's going to work. That's it, Jim. That's the spirit. There you go. You've got it. <laughs> He's a Dompier. You're a Dompier. Maybe. What, what about. Connect a... about that. <laughs> so what? Do all Dompiers know each other? No, but like, y'all are all weird monsters. <laughs> and you can probably talk about that. <laughs> True. So yeah, you finally make your way back to the to the uh, Salty Spittoon. It does seem to be a little bit more crowded now that it's becoming the evening and work days are wrapping up. And of course, people are going and getting drinks after a long day's work. Um, and yeah, you make your way in. I will say, uh, Lila, since you have the highest passive perception, you see at the very, very far end of the tavern is a bunch of miners, one of which uh, is sitting next to Delmas, a half-orc. You watch as the half-orc gets up with a sort of smile on his face, looking in Yorl's general direction, and you just watch as Delmas reaches up, grabs his sleeve, and pulls him back down into the chair. And that's all you see as you all just, go up to the bar. Just a half-orc who is not familiar to me? I would say he is familiar to you. It is Leroy Fisher. I believe you all met Leroy Fisher at some point, Delmas's new boyfriend. Oh, um, right, right, right. So he stands up to say hi and... Stands up to head in your general direction for some reason, and then Delmas yanks him back into his seat. Can I subtle spell a prestidigitation to make it smell like he farted? He is on the other <laughs> side of the bar, so it's got, I'm not what, sure like what the a 30-foot range. range or something? Let me check. I think I got rid of prestidigitation. Oh no! No, nope, I still have it. Oh, it's, it's ten foot range. I, we can, we're gonna walk by, make it smell, make it smell bad. <laughs> I pooped his pants. 
Who pants smell? <laughs> <laughs> smell of I, I shit your pants. <laughs> you can literally spoil some articles yeah. of clothing with press yeah. <laughs> you can, you can with press digitation. It doesn't have to be smelled. You can literally shit yeah. someone else's pants. I, I want to shit his pants. <laughs> Delms or Leroy's? Leroy. Oh, because he looked like he was going to be like a smug motherfucker, right? <laughs> yes, he did look like he was going to be a smug motherfucker. Cool. The only time I the shit his pants. Off <laughs> tried making fun of Chauncey. <laughs> All right. You will get to do <laughs> I, that when you pass by him. I subtle spill him and I go, oh, God, did somebody. What in the what in the <laughs> hell is that smell? <laughs> <laughs> Leroy kind of gets up and turns around and there is a stain on the back of his <laughs> pants and everyone just kind of looks real weird oh. at him friends I, I think in the good spirit of preserving the, the noses of everyone in this bar you might need to make a trip home and he kind of stomps off out of the bar <laughs> with Delm he kind my, of my... glares at you and leaves Oh, his blessings upon you. <laughs> now, I don't need to know that you did that. <laughs> it that was a subtle spell. That. No one knows. Very true. Gonna, I mean, everybody know. knows. Like, <laughs> Chauncey does not. Chauncey does not know. He's just going to be like, Ain't I just a stinker? <laughs> like, Fucking Bugs Bunny. Like. <laughs> Incontinence at his age is a very clear warning sign. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's what have, I'm saying. We could have plague coming through the village. Yes, oh. entry. I should. We 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 should go over basic hygiene and washing your hands after you use the bathroom and before you touch food. That sounds like an excellent idea, Chauncey. Um, so <laughs> the nature of our visit here before I finally get to retire to my chambers. Mm -hmm. This new hopeful friend. Asshat? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I think it's probably I, I am trying to put a happy face on a terrible situation, Lila. Mm. Um, and... Forgive me, I have had a few. <laughs> <laughs> Um, seems out of character for this town, and I don't like that. I need to know everything that happens in this town, and he is a piece on this board that I don't know anything about. What I need to know is how exactly his family managed to be so irresponsible as to let some all-powerful page of a document that could end the world get stolen right out from under them. That nose. would also be excellent to know. And why the fuck is he here? <laughs> so far as I understand it, he's been tracking the movement of the Night Riders. And that's led him here. Which, of course, piqued my interest. Concerned for the safety of my yeah. humble To my home. knowledge, have the Night Riders ever come to Drake's Ridge? I'm going to say no. They tend to stick around things like Ponderosa proper, um, Amarillo. Uh, they kind of hang out sometimes in Red Mesa because there's not a lot of people there so they can kind of congregate safely. Um, they have been seen in other places. Um, they might not have come to Drake's Ridge, but they do sometimes frequent. Um, I totally forgot the name of this plate. Gold Rush. They do frequent, sometimes frequent gold rush because of the amount of mining towns and, of course, the ease of, ease of robbery of just getting, like, 200,000 gold worth of copper from, you know, wherever and selling it off. He did mention that he was just stopping along the way, so. I don't believe the page is anywhere near Drake's Ridge at the moment, but well, the fact that he's passing through. Encourage him to pass through a little quicker. I'm certain that's something you won't have any problem doing. <laughs> now, how about we find out what room he's in? Teddy! <laughs> All right, you don't need to constantly be yelling for me. Sorry. Again. Just... 
Um, <clears throat> yes, anyway, darling. My dear. <laughs> Taking his incredibly <laughs> hairy, large hand. <laughs> Would you be so kind as to inform me where that uh, ringlet haired gentleman is staying upstairs? Usually I don't give out this information, but I know that you don't ask such things without a reason, so he's going to be on the second room on the left at the top of the stairs. That's right. That's where that orc had... Oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Teddy, my dog. And if you could, just one... No, I shouldn't. No, never mind. Thank you, Teddy. All right. You know where to find me if you need me again. Just please no yelling. I'm gonna This is player me, not character me. Just throw I'm gonna lean towards Jed and be like, <laughs> I think she's got something about his hair. She keeps talking about his hair. <laughs> yeah. Um I think it's just because he looked kind of fancy. Mm. And she lacks fancy things. <laughs> She's got, she is used to being one of the fanciest people in town. Yeah, you know? maybe she's out fancy in her. <laughs> she can hear really well. <laughs> Johnson's barely group. trying to whisper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I could speak more quietly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, he's up there on the welcome. I'll show you. Hang on. So, yep, you know this place like the back of your hand. You go up there right to the door, and I'm assuming you're knocking. Mm mm. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna try the fucking knob. I'm just, gonna <laughs> just, mm, just go for it. Oh, it seems Is to it be. Locked? Um, I don't know. Oh, he's, he's joined the second time here, over there. Hey, we see All right. you. Okay, I have audio over here, but I have video over here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this this is going to be interesting. Um, I mean, would you be working. able to get out of the meeting on your other account and unmute yourself on this one just so that we don't have two accounts sitting open? Yep, one second. And I, I am fully loving this, though. I'm just throwing that out there. It, it is kind of funny. Uh, Just, nope, nope, no speaking. That's actually really horrible. Just <laughs> we, we are getting a lot of echo. We're professional on this podcast. There we go. All right. Could, you could now do that to be like an eldritch entity one yeah. game. Yes. yes. Like, Fucking, why didn't we do that for Theris Dun? <laughs> True. There, we go. there he is. All right. There you go. There so, Adrian, Ooh, you is the door to your like, room locked? You're serving. Um, um, I don't think he was expecting anyone to come in, so I'm going to say no. Although, right. I, on the other hand, he did know that these guys saw his raven. I, th I just think he didn't give a damn. All right. I'm probably going to say you've been done feeding for quite some time, so you're probably alone in your room. Is Lila just door open? Yep. Just... <laughs> Door open and surprise. Uh, I don't. Good I... evening, friends. Have a minute to speak about our Lord and Savior, the Great O. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, Adrian says, <laughs> um, "You know what's funny? I just heard his name not that long ago." Did you? You know what I heard not that long ago. Oh. <laughs> I think it was the sound of a, a tiny bird's body hitting the ground. Perhaps we should have this conversation inside of the room and not in the hallway. <laughs> well, what are you doing out in the hall? Nobody asked. <laughs> yeah, well, they... Make some room. Lovey Mae's big. <laughs> Lovey Mae's in here, too. <laughs> well, she just, come on, scoot over. And Lila just like, sits down on As the they bed, all like, pile so into the room. I mean, she's gonna lay is... down. She's gonna lie down on the pillows, like just yeah. she's straight chilling. So these rooms are comfy and cozy when there is only one person in there. When there are four people and two different robots and a raven in the room, 
it is uncomfortably crowded. Last time I had this many people packed into one room, there was a lot less fabric and it was a lot warmer. But funny enough, me too. <laughs> charming. Utterly charming. Um, what? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Don't you worry about it, <laughs> Um, Adrian, who is just currently sitting on the edge of his bed, um, like... Right next to Lila's feet. <laughs> <laughs> she's kind of she's sprawling she's fucking straight chilling <laughs> um so is colton uh um yeah. virgil is, <laughs> totally <laughs> virgil right i have now. three names <laughs> i know it's, it's <laughs> insane um where, is he standing is he sitting sorry i'm, I'm standing I Sorry, think Chauncey, think everybody else is gonna have to be. I think Virgil, up. Chauncey, and Lovey May are all standing. Um, Taylor Poe is perched on Virgil's shoulder like a horrible cat. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, should I stand to, sh um, to shake his hand? Uh, I didn't, I did not extend a hand. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I am. Adrian is uh, extending a hand. Um, Adrian, uh, Astomat the the Um the Rosier. Nice to meet you. You'll find Pleasure. that statement may be a little less accurate than it was with myself and Master Og. <laughs> you can call me Virgil. Virgil Buchanan. It's Although I do assure you the preacher's actions and words are all for the betterment of this town. <laughs> Aren't they? In every sense of the word, Lilo. Chauncey just looks away while they have this <laughs> conversation. <laughs> Chauncey. Chauncey. <laughs> Over here. The drama. Now, uh, my friends have enlightened me as to uh, your, your major motivation is some sort of page of a book. Yes, really, it's a collector's item. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, go on, go on. Can I, okay, can I, he said his, like, last name, and I think from, like, the previous episode, we he, his family's, like, rich and famous. Can I roll, like, history or something to see if, like, I know I'm the name or something? I'm going to say his family is rich and famous in a faraway place. Okay. Um. So it's kind of, like... Yeah, but Jed's the creepy. prince of India. <laughs> Jed's a creepy boy. <laughs> he likes creepy things. <laughs> I would say no. It would be like if some very powerful upper government official of India decided to name drop here in the United States to an average citizen. It, it's not going to mean anything. Okay. Uh, I will be casting detect thoughts with a subtle spell. Um, and, <laughs> and you find uh, no thought I'm kidding um, <laughs> <laughs> that's Stone my gimmick <laughs> <laughs> just kidding no um, you, you can read his mind he does not have a um, anything blocking it could I, could I just the surface thoughts as you like talk about like, your family name then or something <laughs> yeah um, I guess would I could I glean like big rich vampire family from the city of bats? <laughs> like Yeah, what are what are what are you thinking about as you mention your name? Um so Surface my, Okay. <laughs> um the fact that um his mom and his grandfather come from a like really distinguished vampire family like i'm talking stupid rich hey okay. like Wonderful. i could like throw money at a problem and make it go away rich several summer castles rich <laughs> Wonderful. we have a the summer location. castle and the winter castle and then the regular castle for the other seasons we don't care about <laughs> yeah and um, the fact that, like, every single one of those castles has, like, rows and rows and rows of uh, bookshelves and artifacts and shit that probably shouldn't be 
um, out in the general public. Wonderful. So that'll be what you get. Yeah. And what is a member of such a esteemed vampire family such as you doing in little old Drake's Ridge? Um, well, you see, I... So, my family was burglarized, um, mm. surprisingly. Um, we had to deal with a certain number of intruders. Uh, we've dealt with most of them. However, a few of them managed to escape with a certain valued artifact of my family's. I want to see in your head <laughs> when you say that. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you would see, God damn it. um, you would see a page with, uh, filigree and an illustration of, um, I would like to say an angelic figure um with like several pairs of wings um that are outstretched at the top and then progressively uh close in as it get clo gets closer to the bottom part of the body to the point where it's like folded wings acting as sort of like a uh, uh privacy thing um and um it has like one hand like this and another like this with two gold rings um around them. All right. That's quite a description. The page uh, seems <laughs> to just be an illustration. There is nothing else on it. It is just like I said, carpet page. Just a beautiful illustration to break up the walls and walls of text. Possibly okay. sections in the book. Cool. Do I, as as a celestial creepy boy, recognize the angel at all? <laughs> um, I would say it's probably something close to actually. Make me a religion check. Yeah. The the DC will be low, but make me a religion check. All right, that's going to be eighteen. There it is, boy. Okay. Given the number of wings and the rings around the hand, the gold rings around the hand, this is probably a solar. There are not very many of them. They are the highest of all angels. They are the ones that directly serve the gods. Uh, hmm. Although they would pro probably all be in the employ of O at this point, given if they survived, uh, perhaps they died with their god or whatever but solars are incredibly powerful oh, like they are nearly they are a half step down from being a god I'll, I'll beam that information with my telepathy speech into lila and chauncey's heads like, so this is a it's a it's and and she'll she'll actually know she reacts that way <laughs> she's it's i'm sorry it's a what <laughs> <laughs> Subtle as ever, Lila. Um... Oh. <clears throat> Do carry on. Mm -hmm. Well. Uh, is, is Adrian aware? I mean, I'm assuming that he would be aware that... Uh... You heard her say those words. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's and it. You, you are not aware. I don't think you would be aware of uh, Virgil rooting around in your head or beaming it to other people, you would just be aware of Lila sitting up and going, what? What is it? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's about it. That's all mm -hmm. you know. That is just a shame about your family's artifacts. Um, <laughs> but why Drake's Ridge? <laughs> why? Why here? <laughs> um, 
so imagine a game of connect the dots where you go from one dot to the other and in that realm there's like certain dots off to the side when you when certain dots don't connect you have to go wherever you can go that is this place and what are you hoping to achieve here um, we can't offer much we're a very small little mining town Well, considering how you managed to deal with that woman, I suppose, earlier, mm -hmm. um, I would say that you could offer a lot more than that. Well, and if, if I may, we did come to a bit of an arrangement. Master Virgil, I did offer our services in retrieving the page oh, you did lila that information <laughs> would have been incredibly pertinent to know earlier to be perfectly <laughs> fair i did not offer your services mine were the only ones included in the bargain my interest is only in making sure that my humble home such as it is remains safe so i did offer to retrieve the page in exchange for the services of Adrian, ensuring that no danger do come to Drake's Ridge at the cause of it. Uh, I think once again I'll speak into your head. That is a very benevolent deal you've you've made here, Lila. It's kind of unexpected, but okay. Mm -hmm. well, seemed like the best option at the time. He's going to cause enough trouble for us as it is. Right. The page may as well be in our possession rather than his. So. Again, all in the. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I figured. You came here to look for your little page. Um, the three of us have come to be somewhat of the defenders of Drake's Ridge. Um, I'm going to so... look at that. <laughs> I give you so a very, time. very pointed glare. <laughs> you missed this whole bit where Lila was like so concerned about Drake's Ridge safety, and she was she she mentioned a part about even you know even Jed worries you know with the with the fireballs he been casting mm -hmm. in town. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's all for the good of the town. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I tell. Above board, a town by which your character really wants to destroy. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so, if the three of us, well, I shouldn't volunteer Chauncey, if Lila and I can be of service for your little quest, that you can get your page and just run on home to Grandpa, um, We'll try to do our best. Any leads? Anything? Um, I don't know. Do I have leads, dear DM? Aside from knowing that they were part of the Claw, which was a part of the Night Riders in a sense, but the sort of crazy splinter group, as what your grandfather said, um, and that they roam around. No, you don't have any leads. Aside from people pointing you in seemingly random directions, hoping that you'd find them. Um, unfortunately, not as of yet. You know, these people don't tend to stay in the same spot more than they absolutely have to. Actually, since Virgil is rooting around in Adrian's head, <laughs> Would the claw have come up in your memory, despite the fact that you did not mention it? Oh, come on. I mean... I mean... <laughs> I mean... Yeah, all right. So, yeah, you rooting around in his head would get the information that he is not technically looking for the Night Riders. He is looking for a splinter group from the Night Griders known as the Claw. They were the ones that stole the page. 
Does Once he... again, beaming that into the into the minds of our, my friends. <laughs> so, uh, so when Lila receives that, she's just gonna like with her foot, like at if he's if Adrian's still at the end of the bed, she's just gonna like kind of poke him a little bit and just do one of these. <laughs> Before I'm sure you're gonna respond, Jedi goes, Lila, I swear to God, I will <laughs> stop sending you telepathic messages. <laughs> just in your, in your head. Just yeah. um okay. Again, Man. intoxicated. Yeah, like, I love it. It's great. <laughs> quick, real quick, I managed to fix it. I finally managed to fix it. So I'm going to say bye-bye. Okay. Oh. Bye-bye. What? Um Technical oh. difficulties, everyone. Oh my god, why? Wait, wait what? Why? You, you fixed it, but everything was fine. Everything he was, was fine. A, he was using his phone. Because okay. oh, was, oh, yeah. okay, 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 okay. I was so confused. I was like, what? Okay. Oh. Oh. All okay. right, hopefully this is fixed. Yes, okay. it is. Um, All right. It was a whole yeah. thing. So it was a whole thing. After Lila has her little moment, Chauncey's going to be like, I mean, if the only lead that we have is Knight Riders, or uh, there's, there's an this obvious sarcasm. I just need someone to send a sending to my brother. And how did I know? That it was gonna end in you inconveniencing yourself once again. It's it's fine, Lila. I mean, I haven't talked to him in like ten <laughs> years. Yo, I'm gonna beam in your head. Aren't you utterly terrified of your brother? <laughs> uh telepathically. <laughs> like, how do you even remember that? Uh oh, dun dun dun. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Above forget. game. Ooh. Yeah, died. I didn't, <laughs> didn't forget <laughs> everything, Chauncey. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh, it's beside the point. I can't <laughs> just sit here while a world-ending fucking page of a goddamn book with a celestial parasite on right, it. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm on team no celestial parasite. <laughs> 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 Hey, um, tell if if it's still a telepathic conversation, Charles is like, "Well, if we're there, Mazarandia, Chauncey, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the amount of scolding tea mm, that is not being spilled out loud, <laughs> unfortunately. <is> stupid. <laughs> Love it. Love Everybody it. just intently staring at each other. Staring, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, can Adrian just be like, um, to Lila, uh, is this a thing normally? Oh, this happens a lot. You get used to it. <laughs> um, I was going to have the mayor do it, but you can cast sending, right, Jed? Um, unfortunately, according to the rules of my Eldritch invocation, uh, I can only do it to the people who I have inscribed on their arms. It does not teach me the sending spell, which is, I think, stupid. But <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of stuff about warlocks that aren't quite Damn. what they should be, but mm. I feel yeah. like it should just also teach me the sending spell. But I was definitely going to take sending <laughs> when I switched my cantrips, but I also did not. So, <laughs> and we know that Chauncey can't, and I am unsure if Adrian can. So maybe it's a trip back to the mayor. Out loud, Chauncey will say, I mean, if none of us can cast a sending spell, I can just... I'm going to have to draw a portrait of my brother tonight and tomorrow with a... Well, I don't... It's... He probably hasn't aged much, if at all. So I'll just draw him up and hopefully what I know is enough for her to make a connection. Well... Then what? I suppose there's not much more to be done this evening than is there. Save one final caveat of my deal here. Um, yeah. My my new friend, Adrian. Um, 
all of my assistants um and well i'm sure i could be rather convincing to persuade chauncey to avoid his own assistance on your behalf if you don't you see we we here in drex ridge respect each other's secrets yeah. and you were unfortunately witness to a bit of a uh Facial fiasco tonight, and if you want our help, you'll do your best to not mention that to anyone. Adrian just taps his uh, pointing index finger, yeah, um, Mm -hmm. against his cheek a few times, and he's like, "Fair enough. I can. I can respect." Oh, I nearly forgot. <laughs> then I think this could be the beginning of a wonderful relationship. I agree. And uh, before we do retire, the matter of you tailing us with your Corvidian friend, that won't be repeated, I'm sure. Just as I'm sure you won't talk to anyone else about my secrets. Which ones were those? <laughs> well, nice. less, mm-hmm. less secrets, more matters that should stay within us. Indeed. I mean, so far the only person in town who knows anything to the best of my knowledge are the four of us in this room and Mary Yvonne. Which, I mean, trying to keep some things from her is a little difficult. She, yet again, yeah. divination. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think we have a deal, then. Mm. I'll uh, extend my hand to you. And he, um, he doesn't grab the hand, but he does grab the forearm. Oh, like a man handshake. <laughs> like you're just mm-hmm. like, fuck, okay, I guess. <laughs> and you watch I, some flames encircle our hands, and you watch as some, some new writing burned itself into Jed's skin. Ooh. Sexy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you and your deals. <laughs> um, a little bit. <laughs> I think just for a second you watch the, the, the white skin of Virgil fade back into red of, of the tiefling underneath it and then um, it goes okay. back would um does a vampire drink um that drinks blood have any like does it create a connection at all like or with a dampier not D&D wise there, yeah. there are like vampire things but like some of the vampire stat blocks if you're an actual creature type vampire might but not dump here as a race no that's stupid um anywho um i look forward to a long partnership i can't wait Mm -hmm. now let's all get some good rests i think tomorrow will be exciting my darlings, I think I'm going to go see what Billy's been up to. I'm a little bit restless. <laughs> Charming. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have to, yeah. Good night. <laughs> yeah. I'll, walk, I'll walk you out, Virgil. <laughs> How just kind like, of like, you. As she gets up off the bed passing Adrian, she's going to flip her hair just real quick (laughs) goes right in front of his face as she Mm -hmm. I think it is a fancy off (laughs) fancy off (laughs) Mm. little bit of extra (laughs) swish yeah so I guess Lila you go off to find Billy who is probably at wherever uh, Sheriff uh, Bixby is just because they work together so much. Yep. Um. Yeah, you probably find him. Uh. So what and are uh Chauncey and Jed doing now that they've left? And I guess we're walking through town. Chauncey's gonna be like, "Do you want me to 
I mean, I might be able to whip up some of the balm we used to use on your head. Or her wings. It might help. Oh, for, for, for Birdie. I'm sure I can handle all the healing Birdie needs, Chauncey. You can't be there all the time, though. And what is... What is this? Why... Why are you so interested in, in her? I mean... Just... Hearing someone suffering doesn't make me feel good. She'll be fine, Chauncey. This is a good thing. This is the first weakness that Father Hale has. Something we can use. Okay, but she's also a person, Jed. She is, and I will be doing everything in my power to make sure whatever avian transformation is happening upon her goes smoothly. I'll respect it, but if you need help, I mean... You know, I'm tell her I'm right across the hall. Will do. He will not. <laughs> um. <laughs> Surprising no one. <laughs> right, right. How much do you remember now? It's spotty, Chauncey. Things... Things are different, okay? I think that's a deception check. <laughs> I'm gonna try to insight it. Oh, you poor, you poor sweet summer child against Jed's deception? <laughs> no yeah. I know, it, I It's know. not gonna be a great roll-off. I got a nat 20. Try. Just <laughs> try. <laughs> You're done. That's uh, fine. It's fine. Oh, shit. Okay. I know it's not going to beat it. I did roll a 19, but I get minus one on. Excellent. Nat 20 for a 31. Okay. I, for, like, <laughs> oh, a flash of genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is your deception bonus? Oh, what? I had guidance on yeah. there, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. yep. You, I mean, oh, I'm not. You don't even have to bother inciting. There's just a little <laughs> disappointment on Chauncey's yeah. face for a second there when you say that. Um, I think even with your poor insight, you can see a bit of of Jed's character here. Of for the past few weeks, like he had been doing a bit better, and for some reason, he's falling back into old patterns now. Oh, this is angry Jed. <laughs> yeah, this is angry uh -huh. Jed. Damn. Jed is on the war path right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Dun, dun, dun. I'll see you tomorrow, Chauncey. I have to go get some of Birdie's clothes. All right. So, you all head your separate ways. Um... And you said you, you said you were going to get Birdie's some of Birdie's clothes tonight. Yeah, I, I mean we we don't soup. I don't think I have anything new to really say to her, so I, I was just gonna bring it, and we don't need to role play it. But if you want to, <laughs> right. I, I will. I will say that you probably see Caleb at the door as you come in, and it kind of glares daggers at you for a little while before he eventually just at some point. You and I are going to need to have a little conversation about responding to sending spells. It's late. And there's and the door. To... Thank you for explaining that. Get home safe. Bye. I, I want to like make a show of like I have... I'm the one Birdie asked to bring her these things and not him. <laughs> like... Yeah, he's definitely glaring at you this entire time as you leave and you return Birdie's clothing. <laughs> so where is it that you are currently going to be staying? 
I mean, I was assuming I have a room in, in the church, right? Or is it Father Hale's house? That it's Father room? Hale's house. I was just wondering if you were going back yeah. to Father Hale's house yeah. or if you were. hundred okay. percent. All right. So you head back there. I would say at this point, you all have had a conversation into the very, very late evening. Um, I would say both Father Hale and Caleb have gone to bed. And yeah. I do want to talk all... to both of them at some point, but yes. Yes. And you all have a long rest. However, unfortunately, a long rest is not as quiet oh boy. as one might want. Mother wiener. Jed. This is what we get for having two warlocks in the party. I mean, <laughs> yes. <laughs> very true. You never know which one. Jed, you have a vision, clearly sent by Mazarandeo. It is a knife, identical to the one that you have, the blade that begins to spiral. Except this one hasn't been broken. It's completely clean of breaks, brand new almost. And then you're suddenly standing in a field of wheat during the golden hour. There's still blue in the sky, but it's very clear the sun is setting. Everything is painted in gold. It is quiet as the breeze blows the wheat of the wheat fields. You would know just from what this looks like and the feelings that it evokes. This is Amarillo. Wherever this is, this is in Amarillo. And then you see a face a figure turning around, wrapped in chains. Only their eyes and their mouth are visible. The eyes of what appears to be a middle-aged woman, but teeth and ripped apart flesh, yeah. as if her lips have been torn off, wrapped in chains that seem to have been burned into her body as she turns and stares. And then there's a house. It's on fire. And in the darkness, you see a figure standing in front of it sink to its knees as you hear a voice scream out over the crackling fire, Mommy! And your vision ends as you wake up in a cold sweat, as you normally do when you have a visit with Mazarondael. And that is going to be the end of the vision. <coughs> Spooky. Lila. You receive a little bit of something from your patron. You once again wake up in your hotel room, sitting at the vanity. As once again, your reflection transforms. You see the red and gold eye of the huckster. Well, I see you managed to make it home safe. Out oh, there. Thanks, I do have to admit, with my compatriots, in a long, long journey home. Seems like it. Well, I may not have full eyes on full house, but if you happen to be over near uh, Amarillo, you might be knocking around somewhere there. A tavern somewhere. Just a lead to follow up on. That was the name of that uh, goblin fella? Yes, the one with the keys to my house. And eventually, should you find your way over there, will mean that you can get all kinds of goodies from, <clears throat> of course, your favorite patron. Hmm. You do me justice as ever. Of course. Wouldn't give you any less for being my favorite friend. I don't suppose you ever are going to tell me what it is you've, what stake it is you've got in these folk I've been keeping an eye on for you. Well, what's the fun if I just tell you? I am, um, one might say, a god of games. Well, what's the fun if I stop asking? 
You're a smart little cookie. You'll find out one of these days. You'll manage to find the answer. I know you will. Hmm. Well, until then, you keep on treating me nice. I certainly will. And you briefly wake up comfortably, snug in your bed. Probably Billy snoring next to you unless you decide to kick him out. Um, <laughs> eh, yeah, he's fine to chill. Yeah, so you wake up and you definitely hear Billy snoring as he's kind of sprawled out over the bed, the big old Goliath that he is. Yeah. And that is actually where we're going to end this week's episode. So join us next week as they plan their plan of attack for finding the Libra Logaya. And the two warlocks of the party begin to unravel what their patrons may want from them. So I will see you all next week.